And the, the craziest part is like advertising agencies will always be right on the edge. Like ideally, an advertising agency is one of the only businesses in the world where you can pay money and get more money out. You are now listening to the Savage Marketer Podcast with Jeff J. Hunter. Are you ready for a show with no fluff, no BS, and savage marketing strategies from the best in the game? Then it's time to join the community at savagemarketer.com and gear up for another podcast episode. Here's your host, Jeff J. Hunter. All right, Savages. Today I have a special guest with me. He truly is a savage. Matter of fact, he was a savage marketer before I was a savage marketer. This is Jeff Miller. And uh, one of the very few people I've met in person and actually liked. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, Jeff, he's an incredible guy. Uh, He and I worked on a bunch of stuff together in the past. But today I'm dropping some knowledge with this guy's brain. He's going to yep. bring it in, drop it like a watermelon over some sort of a anvil yep. um, because he has a really interesting story. And I think a journey that most marketers go through, especially if you own a, an agency. And today we're going to share an amazing story about how he turned a $500 client into an $18,000 yeah. a month retainer. Yeah, it's it's a crazy journey. And, and if you're starting out your Facebook ad agency, like you're always going to go through the, these like weird stages and you don't know those stages until after the fact. Like when you get your first client, like, oh my God, somebody paid me money. Like, am I worth it? I don't know. They could have done for free. What makes me worth money? Like you go all these, like, I don't want to call them limiting beliefs, but like self-sustaining circles, right? Like it's really hard to break through them. And you have to have these like breakthrough moments. And when you're starting out your Facebook ad agency journey or craft designer website, like you got to have those moments. And if you don't, you never actually break through it. And you've had them. I've had them. People on our circle have them. And and back in the day when like, you know, the original group that we were all part of, like that first one was that like call for clients or curious student. We're like, I'm going to make a post and people want to buy what I have to sell. Like that was like absolutely mind blowing to me because like up to that point in my journey, and I don't think anybody knows this, maybe you don't. Like I was 30 years old living in my parents' spare bedroom no car, no girlfriend, no career, student loan debt through the roof, right? Like I had been fired three times in nine months from their only real job I ever had, right? So that like lion's cage, that like that leash is like really tight, right? Like really, really tight. And everything about your life sucks when you're starting out. Sounds sounds like the typical uh, uh, millennial journey. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much, right? Hey, how was 2008? Horrible. How about 2018? Also bad, right? (laughs) <laughs> or, or 2020, whatever it is, right? Like that, like 10 year curve. Um, I think we're the only generation that's been hit twice, right? Yeah. And probably a third one coming up. Um, but it's really, really interesting. So like to, to directly deal with like that title and the bullet point. So like people aren't like skipping around. My first client was my best friend who's a chiropractor, right? And by a chiropractor, like you got to understand, like there's two types of chiropractors. There are chiropractors that are businessmen and businesswomen first that happened to be a chiropractor. And then there are chiropractors that happen to be in business, right? And this guy was a chiropractor that happened to be in business, right? He just wanted to adjust people, make sure they're taken care of. And he loves it when like, you know, grandma Barbara comes in and says, oh, would you like some mangoes? Could you please adjust my back? Like that's that's what he likes. <laughs> He's not a business person. He's a chiropractor. If you've ever been to a chiropractor, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right, Jeff? Like, like there are chiropractors that do that, right? Um, and I did, I put up a post on my personal profile saying like, Hey, I think I cracked the code on Facebook ads before I start charging. Is anyone interested? Right. And he saw the post, didn't comment, didn't say nothing. And then texted me a week later saying, Hey, I saw your post. I'm interested. And that was like the first breakthrough. Like somebody is interested in me having a dollar driven relationship. Oh my God. Like somebody like, <laughs> right. Like. Oh my God, I'm not worthless, right? And whether you're an author, a a gym rat, graphic designer, blacksmith, you got to like having someone interested in your stuff is a huge deal, right? 
like especially if you're starting out. I agree. That's so validating when someone finally says, hey, you know what? I might be interested in what you have to say. Yeah, it's it's nuts. And it's it's surprisingly both rare and massively powerful. Um, and so he sends me a message saying, hey, I'm interested. And I was like, oh, my God, this could be it. This is my big shot. I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to be an overnight millionaire. You know, like all the like the the cool stuff happens in your brain, which is entirely untrue, but it's totally fine. And then all the opposite happens, the fear of fulfillment, right? Am I good enough? Is it going to work? Like all these emotions kick in. So I was like, hey, I think I could do it. And I was like, I need access to your ad account. And uh, you got to pay for Facebook ads. He's like, okay, fine, whatever. So it gives me the credit card. I'm typing stuff in. And thank God he wasn't with me because like, I'm freaking out. Like I literally have like his like account there. And then the Facebook tutorial on how to put your credit card number in. Like I have no idea what I'm doing, right? It's like a split screen down the middle, learning it as I'm doing it, right? I don't even know how to, no idea what I'm doing, none, right? Um, and we put the stuff in and I use the normal like $21 special that like everybody has. Uh, chiropractors have it, gyms have it, dentists have it, whatever it is. Back then, I didn't know what a good offer was or a bad offer was. I just needed something to work. I needed validation, right? So we do it and we set it up inside of our text messaging software, like Active Campaign. So I get a text message whenever Lee fills out a form. And I turn it on and I spend $5. And then just staring at my screen saying, now what? Like, I'm just staring at it. Like, magic is supposed to happen. You know, like, like when you turn the car and it's supposed to turn the engine, right? You flick the lights, it's supposed to turn on. I'm thinking the same exact thing with Facebook ads, which is like, I turn it on and I'm immediately disappointed. No, nobody says like, hey, Facebook ads take 24 to 48 hours. Nobody says that. Nobody says you're supposed to take more than $5 a day, right? Nobody fucking says that. They're like, immediate results and it's five bucks. Not true. You'll notice in the story, there's ups and downs, right? The entrepreneur journey. So we turn it on, first day, nothing, second day, nothing, third day, nothing, fourth day, which is the end of a three-day trial. A lead comes in at two in the morning. I noticed because my phone went off. And that's when I went, oh my God. Like it effing happened. It actually like, worked. It worked, right? I was like, oh my God. And it was like, it wasn't a fake name. It wasn't my friend. It was a real phone number from a zip code. And an area code nearby, I was like, oh my God, it's two in the fucking morning. And it's like, the sense of release just washed over my body. I call this client and like, hey, somebody filled out the form. And they're like, yeah, we called him and he's coming in tomorrow. I was like, oh my God, this is like really happening. The guy comes in, this chiropractor adjusts him, uses the phrase, was there anyone else that you wanted to come with to bring along to your appointment? The guy says, actually, can I bring my family tomorrow? Sure, I'd be happy to see you tomorrow. He comes in tomorrow. So it's not just one adjustment, it's four adjustments, right? And then the guy says, well, if you'd like, you could actually bring your family in every single week for the next six weeks at a discount. And he makes a $2,000 sales. Like, oh my God, it fucking works. Wow. Well, like, it fucking works, right? And this is a guy who, who paid, who, you had a deal with him for 500 bucks? No, no, no. This was a free trial. Oh, wow. So he wasn't even paying you. You were just like, paying me. You were just like, hey, can I make this freaking work? I'll do it for free. Right. I just, I just needed to know if like the internet was going to say this could work. Right. So I go inside of my support group, like, oh my God, I got a client and they got it my first lead and he got his first sale. I was like, holy crap. And somebody's like, all right, cool. Ask him for a retainer. So I asked him for a retainer. It's like, hey, this is awesome. I'm super excited. This is working. Would you like me to continue running this program in exchange for money? And he goes, sure, how much? I said 500 bucks. He goes, no, thank you. I said, fuck me. I was like, God, son of a Jesus. Oh, and I know it was a bad call for him as a business owner, but he's not a business owner. He's a chiropractor. And most people are not business owners. They're technicians, right? And so, oops, whatever, get hit again. I try it one more time. This time, I leveraged like referral sentences like Jay Abraham, right? And referrals are the single best way of growing your business. So I sent him a text message a week later. I was like, hey, do you know if any other chiropractors would be interested in this service? He goes, I think I know a guy. I called the guy up. I said, hey, you don't know me. I was referred by this guy. I'm a former, uh, I used to run his advertising campaigns. In less than a week, made him $2,000. I want to run the same campaign for you. Just cover my cost of 500 bucks. The guy says, come in in my office. Within like 20 minutes, he said, okay, fine. There's $500. Don't screw me. Let's go. And the same exact ad, and all of a sudden it works. And it works again and again and again. I was like, oh my God, this is how business happens. It's ups and downs. Like each stage, you have to like push 
figure it out. And then you come back down and oops. And then, oh my God. And then oops. Cause like, everyone's like, I mean, you think it's like a straight line. It's never a straight line. Never, never, ever. Right. It's ups and downs, ups and downs. So that's, that's how I got my first client. It wasn't my first client. It was the first guy that paid me money. The first client was that $0 client, right? Which really like break my brain to like, oh my God, it could work. And then, you know, you ask for a referral. That was three years ago. I'm still friends with this guy. We run into each other every now and then. Sometimes he writes me a check, sometimes not, but whatever. He is a technician first and a business owner second. Since then, I've worked with like bike shops. I've worked with uh, carpet cleaners, pest control dentists, kind of the whole gamut. I, I'm trying to be uh, niche agnostic because I really look at like Frank Kern and Jay Abraham and those types of people who are good at a thing and then just plug it into an industry. I really like that. Yeah, no I, think, cor- I think Jay Abraham and yeah, obviously so many of those types of people that and, and this is what I love about ads. And this is what I love about the ad agency is that like it's if you know what needs to be done to drive traffic and to get people, then you can plug it in for dang near any business. Right. Yep. And that's why I think that the ad agency, like, sure, it's going to have its own downfalls. It's going to have its ups and downs. But like, I don't know anyone who's like, you know what? I I, I have too many leads this month. <laughs> no, it's like, you know, I got too many customers and make too much money. Shut the sucker down. Like nobody yeah. says that. Right. And and the, the craziest part is like advertising agencies will always be right on the edge. Like ideally, an advertising agency is one of the only businesses in the world where you can pay money and get more money out. Everything else is like you got to pay money or there's an expense or you're not sure. Like even with like um like manufacturing, like having a factory, right? You got to buy millions of dollars of equipment and then hope three, six, nine, 12 months like down the line stuff works. With an advertising agency, you can probably get an ROI. If it's good, let's just say 30 days. Nowhere else in the world that happens. There's no startup costs. It's just people. It's copy and paste. Let's go. It's probably the most flexible business model in the history of the world. And on and on the other side, that's a double-edged sword. Because if you can't get some of the results in 30 days, they're going to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? They're going to know. And then they're going to be like, that's the standard. And you're going to freak out. But you know what? I'd much rather be on the flexible, no cost, low salary, pay for performance life, which we're going to talk about in a bit, as opposed to being a business owner that has to spend two, three or four, five million dollars in the factory before they can start getting sales. Now, this is a perfect transition because we promised them how we turn that $500 client into $18,000 a month. And, And now Jeff Miller just got done hinting. He dropped a little value bomb right there talking about how he shifted his model away from the retainer into an $18,000 a month pay per performance campaign. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So throughout this three-year journey, um, up until like six months ago, I had only been on the retainer model, which is like, you're going to love it. Pay us month after month after month. And honestly, most businesses really don't want to have to pay for another house or another mortgage or another employee, especially if you're an agency owner talking to somebody who's not a business owner. Like they just view as an overly expensive employee and they're not sure what they're doing, right? They're super frustrated, super frustrated. And you're an agency, which is like effectively a month to month. Like, all right, so I know we signed a six month, good luck. What are you going to do? Sue me, right? It's month to month. And so like the biggest challenge when I was pitching was every single person was saying, hey, this sounds great, but I don't really want to spend this month X dollars. I don't want to be committed to spending that amount of money. And in my head, I'm trying to crack this code. And the way I crack that code is by overwhelming them with value, doing more work, having weekly coaching calls, doing more stuff, getting good at the pitch, good at, like all that, right? And honestly, that's because I was trying to be a good business owner. One day, I'm pitching a dentist and he's like, he's razzing me a bit, just like most people do, right? Like I'm on the phone, I've passed through like three people to get to him. It's like, what makes you better than everybody else? Like, he's just, he just, he's just toying with me a bit. I know the way he's speaking that he's interested in our $3,500. That's how much we charge now, monthly retainer. But he's like, look, Jeff, I know you charge me $3,500 a month. And now you're promising me X results, which is like 20, 30 customer opportunities or something like that. He said, look, I'm going to do the math real fast. He does the math. He says, look, the way I'm doing this math right here is $3,500. 
If you get me 14 people walking into my office, that's equivalent to $250 a show, and I'm not paying your retainer again until I get those 14 shows. What am I going to do? Right? right. Well, I'm going to say no. Like, that's literally the only yes I've got. I was like, well, I guess it's an opportunity like man up as a business owner, but I'm not saying no. So I say, sure, fine, knowing that like maybe 30 days in, he'll be like, oh, you're the worst agency in the world. I hate you, whatever, right? So we run the same campaign for everybody else. Now we're doing dentists. So we know what to do and how to do. Um, and I've done enough like research over the past three or four days to know what dentists want. And for everybody listening, a really good expert secret to know what your clients want is to actually ask them, which sounds really, really weird. Um, when I'm on the phone with a prospective client, I say like, hey, this is going to sound really interesting, really strange, but if you could only sell one thing anymore, what would it be? They will tell you. So guess where you're going to be selling your pitch? We're going to help you sell more of that. It's very, very easy. And if you don't have any prospective clients to pitch, you can just go to Facebook groups and ask people there. You can get on the phone, ask people what they want. You can ask your friends or family. You'd be surprised at how many of your dream clients went to your school that respond to your alumni emails. That type of stuff. So I've done all this research over the past three or four days. I know that this dentist and most dentists, they don't want to sell braces or Invisalign. They don't want to sell teeth whitening. They want to sell implants and nothing else. So what's interesting about dentists, which is the space that we're in now, like a lot of these lower tier products and services are being outbidded by other venture capital companies. Like Invisalign is now Smile Direct, right? Like you're at your house, they will send you the kit send it back. And then a week later, not even the dentist, right? So you don't have to do braces or Invisalign anymore. Teeth whitening, right? Remember you have to sit down and have like, for like a thousand dollars and they can do it at home. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah. So like, I know that he wants to sell implants. And so we customize our pitch to be like, Hey, this is how we help you sell more implants. He gets to the end, it's $3,500. He says, look, I need 14 people coming in. Otherwise I'm not paying it anymore. I said, well, I'm going to say yes to that. You're going to put your money down right now. He says, you got it. Let's go. So he pays me the $3,500. We start the campaign. I'm excited, but kind of reserved, ups and downs, you know, normal entrepreneur life. Week goes by. I look inside of our CRM. We've got some leads going on, which is cool. People are calling and texting in. But honestly, like we don't have extreme visibility into his, into his system. Like he's not, no business is like, let me, let me help this like internet guy from Miami into our CRM. It's not going to happen. Right. So I can see people like requested an appointment and said that they showed, but I don't know if that's true or not. So like I have on my calendar, day 30, expect to cancel. He's not calling me. He's not responding my text messages. It ain't working. I'm having a hard time. Like, well, I don't know what to do, but we'll just keep moving forward. I sent him a text on Friday. It's like, hey, your campaign is live. I can see people are calling and texting all the fun stuff. Let me know how it turns out. He calls me on Monday. He says, Jeff, I'm super confused. I said, oh, no. Oh, that's no good. I said, I said, why are you confused? He's like, I keep getting all these phone calls and these text messages to my cell phone. I go, what do you mean? He says, come on Zoom. And he shows me. He's got like 76 text messages over the weekend. And I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fuck? Like, I'm about to like freak this shit out and yell at my team and my business partner and like everything is probably like, I think this is working. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he just told me, that, what do you mean? I was, I was like, of course, of course it's working. What did you expect? He's like, did I fill out the form wrong? I think this is supposed to go to my admin. I go, I think you did fill out the form wrong. He's like, fantastic. I'm super happy to see it's working. I was like, holy shit. Like, like he thinks this is working. This is amazing. I thought he was about <laughs> to fire us. He didn't talk to us over the weekend. Like, holy crap, right? Now it sounds like your text message probably got lost in the in the 70-something leads he got. Yeah. And this is over the weekend, right? Like literally people are like, hey, I saw the ad about implants. I'm interested. Please call me back. It's like, oh my God, this is fantastic. And then radio silence again. For a week, for two weeks, for three weeks. I'm calling him. He doesn't pick up. I'm testing and texting a staff, no response. I'm emailing, no response. I'm like, well, that's the end of that. Time to find a new client. Day 21 rolls around and he calls me up and says, Jeff, this is Dr. X. Uh, looks like the campaign is working and I'm interested in renewing. I go, that's fantastic. I said, well, uh, how would you like to move forward? He goes, I know that, um, I know that we agreed on $250 a show. 
14 shows. Okay, cool. He's talking, he's doing the math in my head. I'm like, oh my God, he's trying to cancel or something like that. He says 14 <laughs> shows. Okay. Um, give me another 14 and um, expect a check later today. I go, aren't you a week early? He goes, nope, we're right on time. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Right. At looking back, when he heard $250 per show, he viewed it as a product. I am selling a patient that shows up. Yeah, you, he, was, he was doing the math in his head saying, well, if it's 3,500, you divide that by 14, right? That's how he came up with that number. Mm -hmm. So now that you've over-delivered on that number, he's thinking he's obligated or at least committed that he's paying about 250 per show. So when you go from 14 shows to 30 shows, he's thinking it should be double the cost, right? He wants to place another order. Wow. I was so used to the retainer model. I was expecting when the 30th or the 31st comes around, hopefully like the, the check clears, right? But he called me on the 21st. He's like, we've had 14 shows, send me some more. And I was so used to having this like, a uh, payroll monthly mindset that I had no idea you could just bill your client more money. And here's the beautiful lesson I want everyone to take away here listening to the show is one, people love to pay for results because if you're making them money, if I mean, I'm assuming that those dental implants are not cheap, nope. right? $2, so, I mean, pop. how much? 2K a pop minimum. So you're, he's paying you 250 and it's literally getting two grand for, and, and he's paying you on shows, not just yeah. on text messages and leads, but he's Correct. paying you on, I showed up in the office. From there, it's in his ball court. You've done your job. Correct. So, so even if he has a 50% close rate, let's say that he shows up and 50% of those people happen, that's still seven people, seven yep. times 2,000, that's $14,000 that you've made him for $3,500 in his mind. That's how he's saying Correct. it. Correct. That is correct. Since that day, which is actually six months ago, he has steadily and consistently purchased more shows. Last 30 days, we've built him $18,000 and he is our happiest client. Happiest. We have clients on $2,500 a month retainers and every single word out of them is like, this is horrible, this is bad, I'm gonna fight him on it. I'm going, why can't I get more Dr. X's? Why can't I just simply do more pay per show? And that helps me really like formulate this thesis that like when you and I started our agency journeys, retainer models were the thing, right? Thousand six hundred two k, and that became standard. And to stand out, we started doing pay for performance, which could be pay per lead or pay per show or pay per whatever it is, right? Like a product. I'll bet in four to five years after this, Doctor X is like, yo, I'm paying Jeff fifty thousand dollars a month, which is what he's trying to do. We literally have to hire more ads people to run more ads because Facebook won't let us run more ads to fulfill his 50 cam month order. After a while, he'll go, why am I spending 50 cam month with this agency and then try to hire in-house, which is a derivative of the retainer model. That's just how it swings. Like the payment mo model will swing. But honestly, I'm totally okay with like fighting over 50 cam month retainer, right? <laughs> right. Totally fine with it, right? And so right now we're building an $18,000 a month He's our happiest client. He's introducing us to other big multi-location franchises. And he's like, as long as this works, as long as I'm getting shows, I'm happy to pay you more money. And that's what really broke my brain. Because when I was starting out, it was beg, bargain, stealing, and saying, oh, $500 a month retainer and learning to be happy, right? And now we are moving to a way to charge and a pricing model that only top tier people use. Like going to him and saying, or Tanner model, he was like, ah, I'm not interested. Pay for performance. If I had gone to that original chiropractor and said, you're going to pay me $250 and I'm going to get somebody in the office and you're going to be able to pitch them on a multifamily package, he would have said, hell yeah, let's go. But I didn't. Instead, I said, let's just try it out. If I had gone to his next friend and said, I'm going to pitch you on people showing up and multiple families coming in. I'm going to get three to four per week and you're going to pay me $250 per show. That's the equivalent of a $2,000 a month retainer. And he would have been happier, right? Pay for performance. 
And so the overall trend that I'm noticing is that the big dollar companies, the ones that want to spend a lot of money, if we start selling the way they're buying, they're going to be happier about it. So that's really a story about how I turned a $500 client into an $18,000 a month client, uh, to $18,000 a month client, um, changing the way we charge, finding a better pitch. But honestly, the fulfillment for this $500 client is the same as an $18,000 a month client. Even wow. though the industry is different, even though the face we had is different, it's the same process. Right? You know what? That That just proves how important the offer is, right? Because you can sell the same product, but put it up in a different way. Yep. And one of the things that I want to point out too, is that in a business, people always think of, it's the same thing if, as everything in life, what's in it for me, right? And I think the real takeaway here is, is that they know how much money it's going to take how much you can earn, and then they, they're they going to be able to quickly think on their feet, how much can I afford to pay someone yep. to do that? And here's the thing. Most companies will already, we brought up Jay Abraham earlier, but Jay Abraham, I, the very first time I saw him in person, I think it was probably 2018, I was at an event and he had one of those I'm going to open the mic up because like presentation wasn't working. I'm just going to open up the mic. Whoever can get to the microphones, I'll take like five questions. Right. Yeah. I was like, I ran down there. I was like the second guy, you know, and I had just told him about VA staff for my virtual assistant staffing company. Yep. And he asked me a very simple question. He says, what, how do you get most of your business? Yep. And I remember saying referrals. And he says, Interesting. So tell me about your referral program. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I had that exact response, except inside my head, I wanted to die because I didn't have one. And I said, Oh, you know, I don't, I don't really have one. He goes, interesting. And you're in your most, and your most profitable Avenue is from referrals and you don't have a referral program. And I said, yeah, he goes, now imagine if they're doing this for free, how much they'll refer you if you're going to pay them. Yep. And that's the same mentality though, as an agency, because basically if you think of yourself as building referrals and you're sending referrals, hot qualified leads referrals to yep. somebody to come sit down, they would give you a referral bonus anyway, right? Yep. I bet you if you called those clients and just said, hey, do you have a referral system? I have some people to send you. I bet you most of them will say, yeah, I'll pay you. It's, it's interesting, like the way we were sold as buyers of marketing education program is not how we're, the way we're supposed to sell our clients, right? We got sold on like a 997 or a thousand dollar or a, a huge high ticket, a course or a program, end of discussion, right? Beginning and end flat rate. The way we're supposed to sell is probably the exact opposite. And here's what's cool. The closer you can get to selling the way your customer buys, the easier it is. When I start running ads, I'm not going to say retainer. I'm going to throw rocks at retainers. I'm going to say pay for performance only. I'm going to say these patients or these referrals are going to call them, come through like 15 steps before they even talk to your staff. They're going to prepay skin in the game, money down before they even talk to your, to your clinic. That's what they want which is different than the way we bought. And so it's really interesting, like looking back and having these conversations. And I hope somebody listening to this is like, damn, I should probably go to a pay per performance model. I hope so. <laughs> they'll be, they'll, honestly, they'll be like so much happier. The clients, by the way, it's the same work. Arguably less. Well, let's just say it's the same work. For this client that, was, that is spending $18,000 a month with us, yes, we have costs. It's not a profit, normal business process, right? But he is happier paying $18,000 a month pay for performance than he ever would be at a $3,500 a month retainer. And as a marketing agency, let me think about it like this. I could simply spend $3,000 a month on a Facebook ads person, or I could spend 250 bucks on a Facebook ads person and get a scheduled appointment, knowing that one of the five of them will close. And now I'm spending money to make money, which is exactly what, where an ad agency is supposed to be. It's one of the few businesses where you can spend money a little bit and make money a lot of it. So 
I don't know. We'll see if this moves into industry forward, right? I, I do know. And I think you do too, you know, like, the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. And it's the same reason why a lot of the people that I hire, especially when it comes to copywriting and marketing and, and, you know, creating, creating things, you know, especially creative people, I, I would consider marketing as a creative yep. um, that, you know, you really have to have skin in the game. And I think that uh, a lot of people are sold the dream on both sides that you can have these retainers and it's the same. It, it's this, it's interesting because I, I just got done talking about this on Clubhouse. I don't know if you're on Clubhouse yet, but I, I finally got on Clubhouse after being, you know, kicking and screaming because I don't even have an iPhone. I don't have any type of Apple device. I'm Mr. Android. Yep. So I actually had to buy it like an iPad mini just to get on there. Yep. But over the weekend, I finally hosted my very first room and we were talking about uh, my own hiring process for virtual assistants. And it was very interesting because I was talking about how most of the marketing people that I hire, copywriters, creative team, things like that, I always do kind of an incentive structure based on performance. And the reason why is because we get kind of sold that we can just take five, 10 clients at 1500 or 2500 a month, and we're going to be sitting pretty, and then we're going to juggle all these clients. And what's sad is that the people that we care about the the that we should at least we should care about our clients they're kind of getting a bad deal on that because yep. it doesn't and and even there let's say that you set that 14 appointment goal yep and you hit 14 but you're going to get the same whether it's 14 or 30 yep it's actually a disservice to the client because yep. you could be doing better right so so Guys, if you're listening in here, this has been some amazing, amazing gold here from Jeff Miller. I hope you guys follow him. If you're not already in the Facebook group, uh, make sure to go to savagemarketer.com. Go ahead and type in your name and email. It'll send you over to a little uh, Facebook group page. But uh, in closing thoughts, what I want everyone to take away from here is that people deserve performance, yep. ourselves and our clients. And I think that if you're not, it, and I think that, the only people that are going to go for retainers are people that are afraid about the performance and results that they're able to deliver. Love it. Would you agree? I agree with 100%. Like, like the, the challenge is that once you get good at your job, you want to be with clients who are good at their job. The problem with the retainer model is it incentivizes me to perform less. If I'm an A-plus player, all I have to do is do the bare minimum to keep a client. If I'm pay for performance, I can just keep notching up and up and up and up and up. And the cool part is like, if my client is like, hey, you're sending me too much business, that's cool, man. I hear you loud and clear. I'm the copy and paste that campaign, do a generic ad, and then farm out the leads to whoever wants to buy them. End of discussion. Yeah. That's exactly it, guys. I mean, I couldn't say it any better myself. And if you're at that point and you're, hey, if you're in the point, you're listening to the Savage Marketer podcast right now, maybe you're at the point where you're like, shoot, I don't know if I can get results. You guys got to follow Jeff because Jeff teaches this stuff too. Um, one of the things I love about Jeff is he's 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 got a, a great educational model, which actually uh, that's another podcast of its own. That's yep. another episode. It's quite genius. I remember you even sent me over some stuff to reverse engineer because he has a great model where he he dives into these experts and really gets the best of the best to come in and teach his own students. And he has kind of a membership model where yep. his students come in and they get access to all the trainings and stuff, which we're going to talk about again. But the point is, is that Jeff is not only an active doer. And by the way, I think this goes for every industry. Be careful about the quote unquote experts in the industries. Yep. Because a lot of times people will become the teacher and the educator and they won't be actually practicing anymore yep. and they, they become irrelevant. And yep. the thing, the three, the reason why I trust Jeff is because he actually does what he says he does and he, and he actually does the work. Like a lot of people realize how much easier it is to just sell a course yep. and take money um, and they, they kind of shy away from actually doing the work and Jeff does the work. How can they get a hold of you, Jeff? Uh, I appreciate those kind of words, uh, Jeff. Um, if you go to Facebook ad agency scaling secrets, like go into Facebook and just type in Facebook ads, agency scaling secrets, we're the only group with a butt on it, which is like a whole other conversation, but yeah, just Facebook ads, agency scaling secrets, or follow me on Facebook. I've got a lot of stuff on my personal page that if you're starting out, you can just scroll back two or three years and see where I got started 
and my natural evolution over time. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be at like year zero and compare yourself to like Gary V. You want to go back and watch those wine TV videos, right? Like when it was gross and bad. You want to go back to those videos on YouTube where they have like no likes, right? Yeah. Like the only likes those video has is because people that now that Gary V's made it, they want to go no back bad. and look at his old stuff. Yep, that's about right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, feel free to follow me on Facebook, scroll back two or three years, see where I started and see that natural evolution. Cause if you're starting out your journey, it's really important to go freshman to freshman. Um, you can also join the Facebook at agency scaling secrets. We've got a weekly lunch and learn. Feel free to ask me any questions there. And I think that's it. All right, guys, Jeff Miller, guys, go over to savagemarketer.com. You'll be able to see this episode live, uh, all the links, uh, to his bio and and his uh, Facebook group and things like that are all going to be on the show. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show. And guys, until next time, stay savage. Thank you for listening to the Savage Marketer Podcast. Join the Savage Marketer community today to get exclusive access to Jeff J. Hunter and his guests as well as more Savage Marketer strategies. Log on to SavageMarketer.com and subscribe today for more episodes.